I want to welcome you to today's moment of truth from the throne of grace himself, the Lord God Almighty welcomes you before his presence because he's about to do something unique in your life. You see, many of us, I will say all of us as human beings, we are friends. There are people you call your close friends. There are some people or a person you call your best friend. And what are friends for? What are friends for? A friend is there to help you, to assist you in time of your need. A friend is there to help you in your times of difficulty. A, time, a friend is there to uphold you when you are down. And most especially, if you are in need, it will say, I mean the saying goes that a friend in need is a friend indeed. When you are in need and your friend can come to your rescue, then you know that's a friend indeed. When you are tested and a friend is standing by your side, then you say that's a friend indeed. Not friends who want to gain only from you. Not friends who, when things are going smoothly with you, they will draw near to you. Just as people, if you have money today, if you are rich, you are wealthy, people tend to flock around you. But immediately the money disappears, people also disappear from you. So also was the story of Job. When Job was wealthy, when he was healthy, people gathered around him. But when everything turned upside down for Job, they ran away from him. And even the so-called friends of Job, they came and they condemned him. This was a man that they cherished. This was a man that they adore. This was a man they know. This man has no sin. He had no sin against God. But because calamity befell him, the friends of Job denounced him, called him a sinner, called him a wicked man. They were taking the place of God. So today, the Lord is asking you a question. Is Jesus your friend? Is Jesus your friend? You have friends, a lot of friends. But the question is, is Jesus your friend? Is God, or we can put it the other way, is God your friend? And I would say it's Jesus or is God. We are saying the same thing because Jesus is God. Let us pray. Lord, we pray you will speak to us today from your word. And we all shall have the understanding of your words. And we all will have the willingness to do that which is according to your will. And at the end of today, in our list of friends, we will put Jesus at the uppermost. Because with Jesus, we are secured eternally. And so, Lord God Almighty, please speak with to us. And let your name be praised and be glorified. Pray for my listeners over the internet. Pray for those present here in the church. Bless every one of us through your word. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Turn your Bibles with me to the book of James. James chapter 4. I'll read verse 1 to 4. James chapter 4, verses 1 to 4. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not ends even of your lust that war in your members? Ye lust and have not, ye kill. And desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. 3. Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your loss. 4. 
ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. I read verse 4 again. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. From the passage you'll be wondering, ah, is the Bible now saying we should not have friends again? <laughs> Whosoever therefore shall make his, himself, he said that, uh, that he, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God? If I have friends, am I an enemy of God? That means I'm, I'm God's enemy? <laughs> I ask you a question, and the Lord is asking you, is Jesus your friend? The scripture here is not saying you cannot have friends. What the scripture is saying is this. If you say you are a child of God, if you say you have given your life to Jesus, and you are still doing the things people in the world, your friends who are not Christians, what they are doing, or those people out there, or you are doing things that are contrary to the will of God. When you are doing anything that the Bible condemns. In other words, if you are not obeying the commandments of God. You have declared yourself as the enemy of God. You have already said to God, Jesus, I'm very sorry you are not my friend. Jesus, I'm very sorry... You are not what? My friend. In other words, you have said to Jesus, you have said to God, that you are my what? Enemy. Because Bible says friendship with the world is enmity against God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of this world is the enemy of God. You have declared yourself an enemy of God if you decide to do things that people who are not Christians, people who, who, who have nothing to do with God, whatever they are doing, if you get yourself involved in such things, you are automatically what? An enemy of God. You have said already, Jesus is not my friend. But God loves you. The Bible says, He sent Jesus to die for you. So, the world here, world, be a friend of the world, means the practices of the world. If you love sin, in essence, let me just use one full word, one particular word. If you love sin, it means you love the world. If you love sin, it means what? You love the world. That's what it means. And when you love the world, it means you hate God. That means you have declared God as your enemy. Look at what the Bible said again. Let's go to the book of uh, 1 John. 1 John is after James. Just turn on and you get 1 John. Just keep turning on. You, you, you get 1 John. After 1 and 2 Peter, you get 1 John. In the book of 1 John, chapter 2, verse 15. Look at what the Bible said. I, I'll read 15 to 17. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 to 17. Now the Bible says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but of the world. And the world passeth away, and the loss thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Now listen to me. When the Bible says, love not the world. And verse 16 I counted for all that is in the world. The loss of the flesh. The loss of the flesh. 
The scene of adultery, adultery, fornication, the loss of the flesh. The thing that we damage the temple of God in you, using the temple of God, which is your body, to do things that are contrary to God. The lust of the flesh. And I would say, the lust of the eyes. Things you look with your eye and you sin against God. Things you see with your eyes, and Jesus Christ said, if your eye offend you, do what? Pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes to do what? To go there. Things you see with your eye. You see, when you see, instead you're looking at a woman again, the Bible said in the book of Matthew chapter 5, when you look at the woman lustfully with your eyes, mm, you have sinned against God. The pride of life. You want to achieve something. You want to be so important. Go and look at the message we talk about, about your value system. About we say, the, 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 the path to greatness. Look at those series and see what it means to be very, very important person. You want to be rich. You want to be proud. You want to give. You want to have power. You want to be powerful. You want to do. Air. I mean, you want. You want people when they see you, they praise you. They sing your praise. You want to be great in the eyes of the world. These are the things that will make you express enemy of the Lord God Almighty. Because all these things, the Bible says, is going to pass away. They will pass away. But he that is doing the will of God is the only person that lives or abides forever. If you make yourself a friend of all these things, you make yourself a friend of sin, you are automatically saying, Jesus is not your friend. If you make yourself interested in sin, you love to commit sin, you love to do what is bad, you already say, Jesus, you are not what? You are not my friend. You are not my friend. Now, before you even say, yes, Jesus is my friend, Jesus Christ has already called you a friend. In the book of John, let us start the book of John now. John's the New Testament. See the New Testament. John chapter 15, 12 to 17. The Bible says, This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. At least in 13. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. 14 says, Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you that ye love one another. But the, part, the, the aspect I'm going there, Jesus Christ said, You are his friend if you keep his what? His commandments. So if I ask, when, when the Lord is asking us through this message now, is Jesus your friend? He said, Yes. The next is that, do you keep his commandment? Now, his commandment say you should not love the world. His, commander, his commandment say you should not love the things of the world. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. In other words, in, in one word, his commandment is saying you should not love sin. You should have nothing to do with what? With sin. If you say yes, I want to be Jesus is my friend, then you are saying, I don't want to commit sin again. You are saying, he said, if you, he, he are my friends, he's not answering you, you say yes. Is Jesus your friend? You say what? Yes, he's my friend. Now he's saying, ye are my friends, 
if you do whatsoever I command you. Are you willing to do whatsoever God commands? Are you willing to follow the scriptures? Are you willing to say bye-bye to sin? Are you willing to say bye-bye to hypocrisy? Some of us come to the church, but we are hypocrites. We do some other things in our closet. But nothing is hidden from God. God sees everything. Do you want to give up the life of hypocrisy? Do you want to give up the life of pretense? Do you want to give up that sin? Do you want to say, bye, bye, sin? Then, Jesus will be your friend. God will be your friend. I want us to bow our heads and talk to God right now. If ye are my friend, you will keep my command. Talk to God. Is Jesus your friend? Yes. Is Jesus your friend? Is Jesus your friend? Talk to him. If you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, if you have not surrendered to him, then the first step you need to do for him to be your friend is to surrender to him. Is to invite him into your life. Is to tell him, Lord Jesus, please, I'm sorry. I've been a friend. I've been your enemy. Because I do the things of the world. I commit sin. In other words, I am the friend to the devil. And I'm your enemy. But today, I want to be your friend. Please have mercy upon me. The grace never to go back to sin, please grant unto me. In the name of Jesus. Today, Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Please write my name in the book of life. I don't want to go to hell. Please have mercy upon me. Everything caused sin today, I declare that by your grace, I will drop them. Because you are my friend. And you are my friend indeed. And I'm willing to keep your commandments. Help me, O oh God, in Jesus' name. And those of you that are in the church, just coming to church, church goers, hypocrites in the church, tell the Lord you are sorry. That, ah, God, I still love things of the world. But today, I declare you are my friend. Please forgive me my sin. Forgive me for the sin of hypocrisy. And everything called sin in my life. Today I accept you again. Afresh. I dedicate my life to you afresh. Lord Jesus. Come and dwell in my heart. And let me live. As your friend. Keeping your commandments. Thank you Father. In Jesus name. Amen. Let us pray. Father. We well, thank you for your word. These ones have said yes. You are their friends. But the grace. For every one of us. To keep your commandment. The grace O oh Lord. Not to love the things of the world, to do away with them, and to cleave unto you and you alone as our friend. Grant us that grace, O oh God, and let your name be praised and be glorified in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, because we know you have heard and you have answered our prayers. Glory be to your name, O oh Lord, because we pray all this in Jesus' name. And Lord, as many who have surrendered unto you today, Lord, I pray you will reveal yourself to them and you, you will help them. To walk in the path of righteousness. Doing that which is according to your will. In the name of Jesus. Thank you Father we appreciate you. Glory be to your name. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen.